All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome to the channel, welcome to the video. In this one we're talking about the Prinsu roof rack for the 80 series Land Cruiser. Installing it and then outfitting it with a 40 inch light bar, doing the wiring for that as well. And also trying to put, if time allows, trying to put some quick release awning mounts on the side of the rooftop rack. So let's get started. Um, I'm, I think this video really calls for chapters, so I'm gonna put those in the video description. First, we're just gonna use a drill with a Phillips uh, insert, and we're gonna start unscrewing the different portions on the stock OEM roof rack to get that off. All right, so for starters, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different um, Phillips head screws you have to remove. So I've already started taking out these screws, but there are four on all ends, four on the other ends. Take those out slowly. Uh, take all of these out slowly because you really ease into it. You can strip these out. These pop out and this just slides right off. All right, so we got the roof rack off. One quick advice, if you have to work out in the direct sunlight and it's really bright out, and you have a colorway, land cruiser similar to mine, use polarized sunglasses. The sun really kind of beats off the, the roof and then you start seeing sunspots, just, just use some nice sunglasses. Next, we're gonna take some parts cleaner as well as paper towels, clean up the areas in which the uh, roof rack, the old one was mounted, just to make it a little bit better. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so just for now, I'm gonna keep all the screws and bits that I removed from the OEM roof rack because I don't have the Prince roof rack here yet. I took the roof bars off uh, just preemptively because I have to borrow my drill to my father-in-law and I knew for sure I would want a drill to do that part. So I'm gonna keep the hardware around just in case I have to reuse any of it for covering up holes, putting RTV silicone in or whatever it may be. So we're gonna wait and see. So this is my driver's side. I just popped this guy off here took my pocket knife, cut a few slices in the plastic here to get this switch in. So now I can feed this in and get that button right there. This sticks out of there. I'll wait to plug this in later. This next part where you decide to wire at which side depends on where your battery is in relation to your engine bay. So my 90, 1992 and 91 Land Cruisers, kind of the first gen 80 series, the batteries are on the passenger side. So I'm gonna run my wires up along the passenger side, which we need to keep that in mind when we mount the light bar, which direction we mount the light bar in. Um, so yeah, just make sure you don't forget about that. I'm gonna connect the positive to the terminal. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just putting it underneath the windshield trim. I'm just going to repeat all the way up. Super fun. So unfortunately, since my battery's on the passenger side, but where I want to push the buttons on the driver's side, I got to run the switch wire all the way across the engine bay. So I'm going to try and figure out how I can zip tie this to not be over anything that could potentially, you know, get super hot. Okay, so let's just look at the hardware so we can get an idea of what needs to happen. M, 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 M. Why does it say M? F? 
So the letters on each plate corresponds with which direction it goes. So F stands for front, those go in the front. R stands for rear. M stands for middle. Uh, and so the two M's go in the middle, putting the rear on. And uh, yeah, it's actually fairly straightforward now that you start thinking about it. Mounting hardware separated. Bags are labeled. I think there's gotta be online instructions somewhere, so I'm gonna look these up. So essentially there's no installation guide online, so we're just gonna figure it out. Each of these side rails has a slight angle to them, and you want the angle curving inwards towards the vehicle, if that makes sense. I'm gonna put Loctite that they provided. I'm pretty much at a loss, but I'm gonna try mounting it kind of like this. So having the, these things like this, and then putting it over that, and whatever, let's just give it a shot. I just want absolutely everyone to know that this would be way easier with a drill. I'm just gonna set this how I think it's supposed to be, and then we'll just throw it up on there and check and see if that's actually gonna be a viable mounting option. So as you can see, I kind of just lined up the deflector where it needs to be, and then I'm just lining up the, I guess the aluminum slot thingies with the, just kind of eyeballing it. So next, what I'm gonna do is just finger, finger tighten all of them before I tighten. What's nice about doing the finger tightening technique is that you can kind of line things up if you're not perfectly over them, because the deflector will still slide. Next, just line up the deflector on either side, make sure everything's perfect. And we're gonna start torquing down. Put this guy in there, put this guy on here. Then I'm gonna take the mounting hardware that Nybright provided. Do a tiny bit, even though it's not really necessary. So now that's kind of on there. Let's just get it on the other side. Rinse and repeat. All right, so this next part, I could not recommend you do any less. Uh, get someone to help. I'm gonna try and put this on my roof by myself and this is gonna not, probably not go well. Next, to tighten all this stuff down, you just need a 7 16 wrench, and then your, uh, I don't even know what size hex bit this is, but you know, whatever. You wanna start with these ones, um, cause these ones will get in your way. Dude. Freaking psyched to get that thing up, huh? Yeah. I was like, maybe I should wait to ask John to help me lift it on. No, oh, I gotta do it myself. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So basically, I would recommend tightening down all four corners first, because it kind of wants to lift as you, you know, tighten things up. Um, but yeah, so we did one, two, and then the far end. Now we're gonna go on the other side and finish it up. Don't forget to test the rear hatch. Make sure that the hatch opens and closes without a problem. I did as I was putting it up here. Oh, that's on there. All right, 
now the very final step is to plug in the light bar and then zip tie all the extra cable away. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I really enjoyed this whole process. For the most part, it was a little troublesome figuring out how to install and get the instructions kind of figured out in my mind. But overall, it was pretty seamless. Nothing critical went wrong. I did forget to film putting the weather stripping on the wind deflector, but that's a pretty simple process. You just kind of really push it in with your thumb and kind of go all along. It's easier to do it with a rack off of the truck and so having it on the ground, uh, you can get a better angle to get more leverage with your thumbs to push it up, but uh, it's doable either way. I guess other things to note, uh, so far I've had the rack on for about a week and I just really like squeezed RTV silicone across all of the OEM holes that are left empty because uh, you don't want rain or water from the car wash getting in those holes because it'll just go and uh, really nastify your headliner and start some mold problems and that'll be bad. There are a few spots where I was able to put some of the OEM screws into the holes to really seal it off, but I did strip a couple of the holes when I was removing the screws. So there are some that are just empty with only the RTV silicone and everything's holding up fine so far. Uh, in theory, it should be not a problem, but I'll be periodically checking up top to make sure that those holes are still sealed off and nothing's getting in there. I would certainly recommend this product. I think it really does a lot aesthetically for the truck and I think it also really extends the capability in terms of what I'm able to bring with on the trail. I'm super excited in a couple weeks here I'm going to be taking it out for a short weekend warrior trip and I guess you can't really call it overlanding it's more so just the weekender landing uh, but nonetheless I'm very excited to break it in and get it used so hopefully we will be able to get some footage on that trip. Before we depart, I want to thank huge sponsors of this channel, uh, Nautilus Ammunition. They are a quality ammunition retailer. All of their stuff is made here in the United States. Uh, they offer 9mm, 223, 300 blackout, and their list keeps growing and growing and growing. So I'm super excited to be partnered with them because they make really quality ammo that has always ran really, really well in my guns. Prior to using Nautilus, my Palmetto State Armory AR-15 couldn't run a single mag of anything that I was picking up at the stores, I was guaranteed a light strike in a 30 round mag, at least one, usually like three. And I had tried six or seven different uh, brands and types of range ammo, but once I got hooked up with Nautilus, I have not had a single light strike, a single malfunction with my ARs, and that has been really exciting. Use code MARKSMAN5 to save 5% off your order of $100 or more. And they also offer free shipping with their monthly subscriptions where you can get ammo brought straight to your door caliber of your choice, quantity of your choice every month. Thanks again to Nautilus Ammunition for being partners of the channel, and we will see you guys in the next video.